NASCAR's got some trouble on their hands. Bill France is rolling over in his grave right now, and it's not because Brian France did something stupid for once in his life. It's because team owners have now paired up and are walking together in unison against NASCAR. Team owners unanimously agreed to boycott their meeting with NASCAR on Wednesday because they don't think NASCAR is moving through the process fast enough, and they want Jim France, NASCAR CEO, to be at the table. Another major sticking point is the fact that Jim France does not want to make the charter system permanent. And why would he? Because it takes away power from the France family. On one side, you can argue that the charter system has done a lot of good for the sport. It's brought in new money, it's actually given value to the teams. Before, you basically penny do pennies on the dollar for every little bit of the team that you had. Now, you need a charter to compete in NASCAR. You need a charter to get paid through the revenue model. Those charters have become incredibly valuable. Maybe too valuable, maybe some people are overestimating how much they're actually worth, but they are still going for a lot of money. We're talking upwards of 10, 15, 20 million dollars being asked for a charter these days. And that's unheard of because before you could just enter NASCAR if you wanted to. You're like, hey, I want to become a NASCAR Cup Series owner. Perfect. Buy a car, enter it in a race. Now with the charter system, you can still do that, but you have to become an open car and you don't get paid nearly anything out of that new revenue model because you're not guaranteed part of the sport like the charter makes you. So from both sides, NASCAR doesn't want that, obviously. It takes away power from them. It limits who can potentially join the sport. From the team side, they absolutely want charters. It adds value to them. It makes them more profitable. And when they were ready to cash out like Chip Ganassi was, they can get a pretty decent sell price for everything that they own. Teams aren't happy about the whole negotiating process. They don't think NASCAR is negotiating in good faith, so that's why they've decided to not even show up to talk to the governing body. NASCAR, of course, in their statement said that they're open to continued dialogue and honest conversation. Productive conversation, I believe, is the actual term that they used. And they are. I'm sure they are. Of course they are. But for once, NASCAR isn't in the power position when it comes to negotiating. This is now with the teams. When you have every team owner, at least every charter team owner, agreeing to walk together, that's bad news. And before, Bill France would come in and he would just union bust, essentially. Drivers wanted to start a union, no problem, I'll go find other drivers. Owners want to do this, no problem, I'll go find other owners from the Sportsman Series or wherever. They don't have that luxury anymore. The power lies with the owners. We saw it with the Bills and the Bengals on Monday night when DeMar Hamlin got injured, had a heart attack, whatever you want to say. The teams decided they didn't want to play. They made that decision for the NFL. Did it end up working out in the long run for like the Bengals in the whole coin flip scenario? Probably not. But in the moment, they agreed they weren't going to do something, and the sport had nothing to do other than to listen to them. And this is the same thing now. Team owners are all working together. It's them versus NASCAR at the moment, and they have all the bargaining power. Somebody's going to have to give here, and it doesn't appear to be the team owners anytime soon. The other issue that NASCAR is facing, while NASCAR has all the infrastructure, I'm not saying this is going to happen, and everybody right now is like, oh, he's going to talk about a split. You're right, I am going to talk about a split real quick. There's more money within the NASCAR ownership groups than there is within NASCAR. So the NASCAR teams could get together and collectively start their own series. That's not unheard of. Roger Penske owns a fucking series right now. The problem is the NASCAR name, the brand, the equity, everything that comes along with that. You break away from NASCAR, NASCAR is going to find other team owners. They're going to do whatever they can to stay in business. You're going to have a split, and that's obviously not good for anybody. And that's why teams are willing, wanting, not willing, wanting to negotiate in good faith. And NASCAR doesn't want to do that because forever NASCAR has been able to do whatever they've wanted. They've never had the owners be in this powerful position before. And they're trying to still act like that's how it is. This isn't old school NASCAR. This isn't 90s or even 2000s NASCAR. This charter system revolutionized everything. And it's also brought all the team owners together. And you have a lot of new minds, specifically with 2311. They've really been the disruptors here. Same with Justin Marks, who have come in and said, this business model doesn't work. Why are we doing it this way? It doesn't make any sense for teams. And that... While NASCAR is like, we love having everybody here. We love the new blood that's coming into the sport. They absolutely are not happy about that. So at the end of the day, what's going to happen? They're all going to get together. They're going to negotiate this out over the summer, and they're going to figure it out before the new TV deal is signed. The unfortunate part is, 
for the fans because teams are going to get more money. Racetracks are going to get less money. So does that mean that racetracks are going to raise the prices on tickets and concessions? More than likely. That TV revenue is going to go up, meaning that they're going to have to pay more for the rights to NASCAR. The downside of that is more commercials. And if you're not happy with the Fox level of commercials, we'll strap in because right now we're going to commercial every six to seven minutes. We're going to start going to commercial every five to six minutes probably. It's really unfortunate and that's just how business works unless they can come up with a progressive ad model, i.e. Formula One. IndyCar has done a really good job of it. They just have to make that work with their partners. We're not going to get into that right now. This is about the boycott. Good for the NASCAR team owners for standing their ground. And good for NASCAR for maybe not giving in yet. This is going to be a standoff. It's going to be really interesting to see how it plays out. Never expected to see this. Follow me on Twitter at BreakHardBlog. Same with Instagram, BreakHardBlog on there. TikTok at BreakHard. And like and subscribe to the YouTube channel.